What is up my dudes, cheap bastard the talking to ya. My OG viewers may have noticed this, but I have uploaded this comparison video before, but for some unexplainable reasons this video disappeared and could not be found. So, this is a fresh comparison video which hopefully won't be lost in space like Team Rocket. Here are the test system specs and the specs of our contenders. And let's start testing. And the first game tested was GTA 5 on 1080p ultra settings. i5 performed better here than i7, but i7's usage was much lower than i5's. 10 questions science still can't answer. Rainbow Six Siege on 1080p ultra settings felt better and performed better on i7 with these results. On Overwatch I used the 1080p resolution and ultra settings in both cases and i5 performed better once again, but its usage was maxing out, while i7's extra cores were left unutilized. On Rocket League benchmark results became Australian, cause i7 took the lead in the benchmarking battle and won in every single category on 1080p highest quality settings. I don't know what is happening in this video, but our contenders are completely dominating each other in different games. In CSGO for example, no matter what settings were used, ultra or low, i5 got much better frame rate this time. These CPUs must be using that FPS changing gun from our beloved mobile classic, I think. And now let's transition to Just Cause 3, which is known to require a lot of horsepower from the CPU. And on 1080p high settings, i7 performed noticeably better, taking a lead in our epic race for a higher frame rate. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was so heavily bottlenecked by the GPU that on 1080p high settings I couldn't tell a difference between these CPUs. And sadly, I couldn't find my cool frog this time. Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville on 1080p high settings felt like a day and night between these processors. With i5 I was getting micro stuttering, where i7's gameplay could be described in this pic right here. Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay was also heavily bottlenecked by the GPU, but on 1080p balanced settings i7 somehow got more FPS despite graphics card being at 100% load all the time in both cases. And this thing goes to the list of things I cannot explain, like the certain types of Obanium. Obama spear, Obama ring. And after using the same car on the same track in Assetto Corsa, i7 won slightly using 1440p resolution and ultra settings, but the victory was so unnoticeable that it didn't make it into top 5 victory royale compilation sadly. And finally, I got the least fun car game benchmarked for the game test finale, Dirt Rally 2.0. This driving everywhere but not on the road simulator on 1080p high settings favored the i5 a bit with unnoticeably higher minimum and maximum frame rate. To conclude, if you're looking forward into playing newer games like Super Mario in real life and editing, then i7 is the cheaper and obvious choice here. But if you are in need of squeezing every FPS from CSGO or Overwatch, choose i5. Subscribe to finally be able to get a haircut in these rough times and don't forget to stay cheap my dudes. Cheap bastard out. By the way guys, thank you so much for 500 subscribers.